So I'm gonna talk about the reserve list is cracked. And this is an alpha investment video, which again, because I'm not live streaming, I'm not watching his videos, I'm just reading the title. And I'm assuming he's talking about the magic 30th, which he always talks about. So the reserve list, it never existed. It was a marketing ploy. It was not a contract. It was not a verbal contract. It was not a written contract. It was not a promissory estoppel that people, you know, relied on that information and then they made investments on that. It was none of this. And as a lawyer, I am actually a lawyer. I know very surprising, you know, on YouTube, everyone's a lawyer, except it's illegal for you to rep misrepresent yourself as a lawyer, unless you're actually a certified lawyer, which I am. I'm an IP lawyer of all things, so this is right up my alley. Um, when you have a contract, you have two parties. Okay, contract law has consideration. One party is doing this because the other party is gonna do this. There's some type of agreement. There's somebody, you know, acknowledging the agreement on both sides. And there's, you know, the practice of the agreement. And hey, we're gonna do this. Like I mentioned before, if you really wanted to stop them, it wouldn't be today. Now you can stop them today. There's 20 million magic players. Let's say a million of them are offended by the reserve list in the 30th anniversary. And they're offended that, oh my gosh, my press is reserve list cards. Sue them. Not one has done so. Do you know how in law school we do case law, which is we study, we learn about the law by reading cases and the cases that make the law school books are like just weird ass cases. You know, uh, torts, uh, property, banking law, like, you know, I took all these classes and every case that we learned about was like some weird case with these crazy circumstances and that's why it makes a law book. Uh, it's called case law. And that's all we do. We, all we do is read case law. We make a little note about the case law. What do we learn? And we read the next crazy family law. It's like crazy as hell, man. Um, I can tell you family law is probably crazy. It's immigration law, also very crazy. Uh, and it's only these very absurd, ridiculous cases. If you won this case, you would make a law book because it would be almost unwinnable. But that's why no one will sue. So um, back when they were doing From the Vault, uh, they were doing judge promos, the Survival of the Fittest, Wheel of Fortune. Survival of the Fittest is a beautiful judge promo. I think is the most beautiful judge promo of all time in my personal opinion. Um, they also did a From the Vault, and that had both uh, Mox Diamond, yes, and the Memory Jar, at least those two that I know of. I'm trying to remember if I had anything else, and probably did not. I think it was From the Vault Exiled, so was everything exiled in it? I don't remember. Uh, I, I also remember maybe in Commander's Arsenal, they made like a giant Sliver Queen or something. I, I, I vaguely remember like a giant oversized Sliver Queen for some reason. All right. Those could have been times, and today can be a time. So you're gonna tell me that the case is so strong that all the Magic players are so upset, right, about this product, including Rudy Chan, and not one of them gets past the actual filing of a lawsuit, which costs like a 50 to $100 court fees, which you don't actually need a lawyer to file a lawsuit, by the way, in civil court. Not one person has decided to do this action. You literally would need two hours of your day, obviously like a basic case, right? And then you would file. Now, I'm not saying that you, you get past summary judgment. I'm not saying you get past the even picking a jury. I'm not saying that you win the case. I'm just saying that you took your two hours of your day to file. So all these people with all their collections and all these millions of dollars they've lost apparently, not one of them decided it was worth their time or it was even viable to the point of them filing for a case number. If they did file for a case number, I would know, I would search the database and I would cover it because it would be very interesting content to cover. In fact, I would probably even help you. Um, would I take on a case like that? I don't know. It's interesting. Like I said, you know, like it, it's one of these cases that if you were to win this case with these circumstances, it would make the law book. And very few cases make law books, guys. The law book is only yay big and it's all just case law.
And then, and then like some summary of what we were supposed to learn. I am tempted to do it, but I know we wouldn't win. And then therefore, if I don't think we can win, why would I do it? I'm, 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 I'm telling you right now, I don't think it's a good argument. I've looked at the arguments online from these uh, non-lawyer individuals pretending to be lawyers online, which is illegal, by the way, just in case you guys need me to tell you that because you're a non-lawyer, so you don't know that. You didn't take ethics class. Um, my God, it is savage, my dudes, because if all these people have all this money they lost and they're all this upset, class action it, man. That's what they're doing with FTX. That's what they're doing with um, BlockFi and Celsius. That's what they're doing with. If you feel like that you lost money because you believe that this thing was a real contract or this was at least a promise that you could rely on and you took action based on that promise, then yeah, why don't you sue like the people in FTX? There, there's a tons of people suing people with F Brian, uh, Kevin O'Leary, um, you have uh, Steph Curry, Tom Brady, uh, you have a lot of influencers on YouTube who maybe get sued a little later. There's going after big dogs right now like Tom Brady, Giselle, and for the uh, Bored Ape, they're going after Justin Bieber and friends, right? These people who promoted Bored Ape. And I look at magic and I say, there's a lot of people and they're very upset, but there's not one lawsuit. Like, you know how easy it is to file a lawsuit. You don't need to be a lawyer. In fact, if you go down to the courthouse and so forth, they will, they will step by step tell you how the, the way that the system is set up is that somebody with no knowledge, with no lawyer, they should be able to sue. If they felt that they were wronged, they should be able to sue. And even, you know, if you could get a lawyer for a free consultation or something like that, and they could get maybe, especially class action, maybe they do it on commission, right? So then if they win, they get a, a share of the winnings. Uh, that happens a lot in pollution cases. That happens a lot in environmental cases where the lawyer is working basically for free and they're still keeping track of their hours and they only get paid if they win. But they do get a large chunk of the winnings because they took on the risk of, you know, what if we don't win? Then I don't get paid. So you would think that somebody would have sued already, yeah? Where are you? If you feel like you have been wronged and you have lost money, why not file a lawsuit? Hi guys. <laughs>